Elevate Online. We are super excited that you would gather with us on this first day of 2023. I can't believe it. It's already here. I'm not even sure where 2022 went. I'm still recovering from 2020, but man, we are here regardless. And so my name is Zach. If you're watching for the first time, I'm one of the pastors here. And so we're super excited that you would join us today. And I, I recognize this is a little bit different, obviously, um, but but it's designed to be, it's supposed to be, and there's a good reason for it. We'll, we'll get into more of that later. But first, let's start off with the question of the day. Are you ready for the question? I hope so, because it's coming at you hot. Here we go. Here's the question of the day. What is one thing you want to change this year? What is one thing you want to change this year? Maybe lose weight or get better financially or have a better relationship with, with, with people or, or even God. Why don't you take 30 seconds, discuss it with someone that you are sitting around in your living room or maybe in your car or maybe you're on the beach this morning. I don't know where you're, you're at, but discuss with someone what is one thing you want to change this year. Ready, go. bring it on back. So I don't know what you want to change this year, but for me, one of those things is, man, I, I'm in my I'm in my 40s now. I'm 43. I'll be 44 this year. And it feels like my waist is headed that way. You know what I mean? Like my dad bod is setting in. And you know what? Overall, I, I'm, I'm feeling myself getting older. If, if, if you're in your 20s, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But if you're my age or even older, you recognize your body starts kind of falling apart and things are like, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's all happening. And so that's one thing I want to change. I want to, you know, get, get, get healthy. I want to exercise a bit more and whatever it is, I bet it would be awesome to start with a blank slate. What I mean by that is if your goal is weight loss and, and according to studies, 43% of us want to either live healthier or lose weight, wouldn't it be awesome to start off skinny? You know what I mean? Like without the impending dad bod coming in or, or maybe your goal is to be in a better financial position. Wouldn't it be nice to start at zero instead of in the negative, like 20 grand because of school loans? Come on, Joe Byron. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you're there. I don't know, but maybe your goal is to have better relationships with people, maybe your spouse or your kids or whomever. Wouldn't it be nice to start over? without all the hurt and the baggage that you're carrying into the, the relationship or maybe ways that they've hurt you or ways that you've hurt them? What about being stressed and exhausted all the time? Wouldn't it be nice to start each day refreshed and rested, ready for the day? So that's the heart of this message. You see, it's about starting fresh. It's about starting 2023 from rest. In fact, the title of today's message is this living from rest. And that sounds maybe a little bit weird to you, and we're going to talk more about that, but, but we wanted to start this year from rest. And we didn't want to just talk about it. We wanted to actually live it, to do it as a church family, as a church 
Ohana. So we decided not to have in-person service on the first day of the year so that we could start from that place, a place of rest. We wanted 2023 to be first about being with God instead of just doing for God. Now, let me say this. Doing for God is good. It's not bad. But we wanted this year, this day, to be about being with him instead of just doing for him. And here's what I mean. Most people live their entire lives all stressed out. What we say in our family is don't get all stretched out, you know. They live all stretched out. Let me let me show you this, this uh, study that I found online. Look at this. It's the percentage of women and men who said most days they are completely overwhelmed by stress. Look at that. 62% of women ages 18 to 34 said most days they are completely overwhelmed with stress. 62%, 51% of men in that same age group said that they are completely stressed out most days. Do you know why the number is higher for women than it is for men? It's because the men stress the women out. That's why it is. I'm telling you right now. But listen, this is, this is most people. I mean, just overwhelmed by stress. Another study said this. And this was done this last year. 76% of Americans said they have experienced health impacts due to stress in the prior month, including headache, fatigue, feeling nervous or anxious, or feeling sad or depressed. In fact, some of us, if we were honest, would raise our hands for most of these health impacts, maybe all of them, right? And this begs the question each of us should be asking ourselves, is this how God intended us to live? Stressed out, anxious, exhausted, depressed? Is this what he wanted for each and every one of us? And maybe you know the answer already, but I want you to keep that question in your pocket because we're going to be talking about it this morning. Let's look at what Jesus himself said about this idea, the way that we should live our lives, either stressed out, anxious, depressed, all stretched out, or something different. Let's look at John chapter 4. Here's what it says. And Jesus is talking. That's why it's in red. It says, my purpose is to give them. That's you and me. We're a them, right? My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. How many of us would say that we have that? Like, if you were honest with yourselves, how many of us would say that that's the way that we are living our lives, rich and satisfying? Or maybe... Maybe, maybe if you were honest, you would say, I want that. Like, that's, that's what I need. That's what I want. Me too, man. I, I want to have a rich and satisfying life. So maybe you're asking the next question that pops into our heads. How do we get that? How do we get to a place of, of our lives being rich and satisfying instead of all stressed out? And maybe that's how your 2022 was. Maybe it was stressed and there was tons of anxiety and things and difficulties. How do we make 2023 different. Let's look at Matthew chapter 11. Once again, obviously this is Jesus talking. He says, come to me all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens and I will give you rest. Now a lot of us fit into the weary and heavy burdened category, right? That's most of us. Let's see what the next verse says. He says, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart. And you will find, read that with me, rest for your souls. Now, there's some very important verbs in these two verses that, that, that I want to show you. But let's first look at this Old Testament passage Jesus was quoting here. In fact, it's the one that I underlined here. Jesus was quoting from a book in the Old Testament. It's actually the book of Jeremiah. It's his prophet. And Jesus was quoting directly from chapter 6, verse 16. Now, Jeremiah is speaking from the Lord when he says this. This is Jeremiah chapter 6. He says, this is what the Lord says. Stop at the crossroads and look around. Stop at the crossroads. And many of us know what that means. That means we're at an intersection. We're at a pivotal place in our lives. And God is talking to the Israelites. He's saying, stop at the crossroads and look around and ask for the old godly way and walk in it. Travel its path and you will find rest for your souls. Here we see what Jesus was talking about. This idea of us being at a crossroads and asking for an older godly way. Now God is talking to the children of Israel through Jeremiah 
and he says, he says, stop and look around, right? Are you okay with how things are? We're at a crossroads. We're at an inner section, right? Now, this concept about rest and us finding rest for our souls, this isn't something that Jeremiah invented. In fact, God was speaking through him, obviously, but this, this actually goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 2. Let's look at that. This is Genesis chapter 2. Now, a little bit of context before we dive in there. Genesis chapter 1 is all about God creating the entire world, right? Each day he created something. So then this is where we jump in Genesis chapter 2, verses 2 and 3 on the seventh day. Let's read it. On the seventh day, God had finished his work of creation, so he what? He rested from all his work, and God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy. Why did he declare it holy? It says here, because it was the day that he what? He rested from all his work of creation. Now come back to me. Let's talk about that. Let's think about this. God creates everything, and then he rests from his work. And because he rests, he blesses the day. I want you to to recognize this is the old godly way that Jeremiah is talking about, right? It's blessed to rest. Elbow somebody if you're sitting with somebody and say, it's blessed to rest, right? We're walking in God's blessing when we rest. So this is where we're going to kind of bring it home. We're going to kind of talk about this because I believe that there is a way to live from rest. I believe there's a way to find this old sort of godly perspective that we see here, this, this, this blessed rest that we see here in Genesis chapter 2 and also in Jeremiah chapter 6. Now, let me, let me kind of phrase it like this. Most people live for the weekend, right? You've all heard of you know, Aloha Fridays and we're just like, Monday comes around and we cannot wait for Friday. We can't wait for the weekend. But what if we, instead of living for the weekend, what if we lived from the weekend? Now, hear me out. What I mean is, what if we flipped the script? What if we started our week on Sunday instead of ended there? Like, what if the first day of our week was Sunday instead of Monday? Now, I know this is a little bit strange to kind of wrap our brain around, but think about this. What if we worked from rest, this place of blessing that we see in Genesis chapter 2, instead of working for it? And maybe you're thinking, okay, PZ, I get that, but God blessed, he blessed the seventh day, not the first day. So I got you there according to Genesis. But maybe if we consider this, wasn't God already rested before he started working the first day? Maybe you've never thought about it that way. Wasn't God already rested before he even started working? My challenge for you is, yes, God was rested before he even started working in the first place. And we see this kind of concept all over Scripture. For instance, we don't serve God, um, we don't, excuse me, we don't serve others for God's approval. We already have it, right? Like, we don't bless others for God's love. The Bible says he first loved us, right? We don't. We don't help others for God's forgiveness. He's already given it to us, hasn't he? I know it's a little bit strange to wrap our brain around, but I believe we can, we can live from rest. We can, we can start from that place if we'll choose to. Okay? So, here's what I want you to think about. I want you to think about my week doesn't start on Monday. My week actually starts on Sunday. And the first day of my week, I want to live from rest. So I'm going to take this day, this January 1st, 2023, and I'm going to start from a place of rest, not a place of doing, not a place of going, not a place of stress, not a place of anxiety, but a place of rest in my life. And I'm going to work the rest of my week from that place. Does that make sense? I hope you're catching this. So let's take a look back at the verses in Matthew to find out our part of this equation, our part of this rest. So this is Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 and 29. It says, then Jesus said, come to me. Now we read this already, but we're going to look at our part, our, our, our partnership when it comes to God, what God expects from us. Okay. Then Jesus says, come to me. Everybody say, come to me. That's good. Come to me. If we want to live from rest, if we want to start this year, 2023 fresh with a clean slate, Before everything else, the first thing we have to do is come 
to Jesus. You see, many of us run to other things. Many of us, we run to things that aren't necessarily bad. Maybe we run to exercise or we run to work or vacations or maybe even hobbies. And these things aren't bad. But instead of running to Jesus, we run to these other things first. Maybe some of us run to things that can be mad, bad, like addictions or, 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 or negative distractions. Maybe it's things like alcoholism or even partying. Maybe we run to things that are detrimental to who we are as a person. The thing I want to challenge you with this morning is if you want rest, the first thing we need to do is come to Jesus. That's what he says, come to me, right? So that's the first thing we got to do. Let's look at the second thing. Not only do we have to come to Jesus, he says, come to me all of um, all you who are weary and carry, uh, carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. The next thing he says is, take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon you. Now, a yoke is a harness for work, and some of my Hawaii people have never seen one. Maybe if you're watching from Colorado or the mainland or other places, you know what a yoke is because there's lots of cows around you. But in, Col in, in Hawaii, there's not very many cows, so I'm going to show you a picture of what a yoke is. Here's, here's a yoke. So these are a couple of cows, and the wooden thing that connects them is a yoke. It's a, it's a wooden device that's used to help yoke cows together. Now, they used, they used it to plow fields and to pull heavy things back in the day. Now we've got Toyota Tacomas to do that kind of work, right? But back then, they would yoke cattle together to plow the fields. In fact, my dad was called into ministry at, at about 15 years old while he was plowing the fields with one of these yokes. He had two oxen yoked together. He was plowing the fields and he felt God's voice call him into the ministry. Isn't that cool? But here's the thing. We can only wear young, uh, one yoke at a time. It would probably be uncomfortable, if not impossible, to wear two yokes. Here's another picture of a yoke. Check it out. You couldn't wear two yokes. So here's what I need you to catch. Jesus is saying, take off your yoke and put on mine. Right? Take my yoke upon you. Each of us wears yokes. We have work. We have jobs. We have things that we do, um, 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 uh, pl uh, fields that we plow, all that kind of I idea. But Jesus is saying, take off your yoke and put on mine. And the amazing thing is that yokes are made for two oxen. Here's the, here's the picture. Jesus is going to be pulling along with us. He's going to help us carry that load. So the, the first thing we have to do is we have to come to Jesus. The second thing is that we have to take off our heavy yoke and we have to put on his, the one that he's designed for us, the one that he wants to help us carry. So then here's the third thing that Jesus says. Obviously, he says, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. But here's what he says. He says, let me teach you because I'm humble and gentle of heart. And then you will find rest for your souls. Okay, come back to me. Everyone say let. That's right. Let. We have to let Jesus teach us. And that sounds a little bit weird, but we have to let him. We have to give him permission. Have you ever tried to teach someone who didn't want to learn? Right? Oh man, any parents of teenagers say amen. I've got a couple of them. My kids are great, but they have to let me teach them. Otherwise, they don't want to learn, right? We have to choose to be taught. We, we have to choose to learn a new way, something different. And maybe if you're sitting here this morning and you're considering your 2022, I know I'm doing that and each of us are probably thinking about things like that. How do we do something different? How do we live from rest? How do we choose something different than, than 2023? And maybe your, your, your year, your previous year wasn't all that bad, but maybe there were some mistakes that you made. How do we let the Lord teach us? How do we let him train us to do something differently? That's what this is about. So here's what we have to do. We have to come to him the first day of 2023. That's what you're doing. And if you're watching right now on January 1st, 2023 at 10 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time, you've done it. Good on you for that. We have to come to him. Now we have to take off our heavy yoke and we have to put on his. 
And finally, we have to let him teach us. And if we can do that, then we can find rest for our souls, the rest that you and I so uh, desperately need. But we have to choose it. So remember the prophet Jeremiah? We talked about him. I want to show you something because it's really interesting what he says. Let's go back to Jeremiah chapter 6. We're almost done. This is what the Lord says. Stop at the crossroads and look around. That's each of us right now. Each of us are at a crossroads in our life. We can choose to do the same things we did in 2022. And like I said, maybe some things are good, but you and I know that there's some things that are bad, some ways that we carried stress the wrong way. We chose our yoke instead of Jesus. God is saying, look, we're at a crossroads right now. The first morning, January 1st, 2023, he says, stop and look around. We need to ask for the old godly way. We need to walk in it. We need to travel its path. And you will find rest for your souls. But look at the people's response, the children of Israel. Look what they respond. But you reply, no, that's not the road we want. This is crazy, right? And it's easy to roll our eyes at the Israelites. But isn't that what you and I do? We're all guilty of that at different times. Most of us raised our hands when we said we need rest. We're struggling with anxiety or stress or depression. But, but are we saying the same thing to the Lord today? No, God, I got it. Like, I can, I can figure it out. I, maybe if you're local, you say, oh, brah, can't handle, right? No need help. Like, no worries, Lord. I don't need you. I can, I can handle this myself. And maybe for some of us, we're even thinking, God, I don't want to bother you with my problems. But then we wonder why we can't find the rest that we so desperately need. Jesus knew our stubbornness, and that's probably why he quoted the prophet Jeremiah in the book of Matthew. Listen, today we're at a crossroads. And we can, we can carry the same stress or anxiety or worry as last year, or we can choose differently today. What if every day, before we yoke ourselves with with, with our work, maybe by checking emails or maybe to social media, before we yoke ourselves to social media by jumping on Instagram or, or, or YouTube or, you know, whatever it is, TikTok, before we yoke ourselves to homework or all the stuff that needs to be done around the house, what if the first thing we did is we come to Jesus? First, what if, what if we said, Jesus, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow what you told me to do. I'm going to come to you first. Now listen, I know everyone is busy, but what if we took even two to three minutes before everything, just us and Jesus? What if we started our day from a place of rest and trust in him? Now I know we're starting 2023 like that, and that's what you're doing, and I'm so proud of you for doing that. But what if we started each day with a moment of rest with Jesus? A moment of trust, even a moment of prayer. Now, we're going to talk a lot about prayer this month. We're, in fact, going to start 21 days of prayer and fasting with Foursquare. It's going to be a really cool thing. It starts here in just over a week. But, but, but listen, today as we start this year off, I created a prayer for us to recite today and each morning, especially in the month of January. But what if we chose to start our day like this. Now, part of this prayer is adapted from a Lectio app that I, it, um, it's a prayer app that I use called Lectio 365, but, but here's the, the thing I want you to know today. I can't give you the rest that you need, and you can't really do it either, but Jesus promises that if we'll come to him, we'll take his yoke and learn from him that he will give us rest. It is possible to start your year and each day of 2023 from a place of rest. So here's the thing. In the next few moments, I want to recite this prayer with you. And I'm going to put it up on the screen. And, and, and I want you to recite this prayer aloud with me. And then we'll sit for a moment in quiet, choosing to trust him with our day and also with this new year. Here's the prayer. So once again, I want you to recite this prayer aloud with me. We're going to go through it, and then after we finish, we're just going to sit for a moment 
in silence, in rest, asking for his blessing. And you can pray if you want to. You can ask him in your own words. You can thank him that you made it through 2022 and that he's given you a new year. But we're going to sit for a few moments after we recite this prayer. Would you read it with me? Here we go. Dear Jesus, today I choose to come to you first. I trade my yoke for yours because I trust you. I'm willing to let you teach me to live from rest. Help me to abide in you. Help me to give myself away to others, being kind to everyone I meet. Help me to love the lost, shining your light in all I do and say. So today, dear Jesus, we choose to come to you. We ask that you would have your way in us and through us, not just today, but also this year. God, I pray that you would give us the courage and the space, Lord, to every morning wake up and to come to you, to choose to take your yoke, to choose to learn from you. Teach us how to live from rest. Show us, Lord, and each of us, God, we choose today to accept that rest that you freely give. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank you once again for spending some time with us on the first day of 2023. We will be meeting once again in person at 10 a.m. next Sunday, but here's the thing I want you to know. I'm proud of you for taking this moment. I'm going to be emailing this scripture to you as well. We'll put it up on our website so that you can read it every day. You can download it to your phone. But let's take just a few moments every day. Let's recite this scripture. Let's pray to God and let's start each day from rest. God bless you.